So first, would you tell us where you're from? So I'm from Spain, from a city which is called Valladolid. And, um, and how did you start studying music? How old were you when you started? So at first, actually, I started playing a snare drum. Uh, actually, I was more involved in uh, folk music. And afterwards, I started uh, studying classical percussion. And I started in my city, in Valladolid, uh, till I decided to, to become a professional uh, percussionist. And then I went to, to a city called San Sebastián in uh, Basque Country in Spain. There I studied percussion because all timpanis we first uh, study percussion in general. And then I decided that I wanted to, to do a specialization in a timpani in order to play timpani in orchestra. So I moved to the Netherlands to a city called Maastricht. And then there I studied my master in, uh, in timpani. And why did you choose percussion? Well, it's a good question. Uh, I think uh, I just uh, was uh, listening so so often, like the snare drum playing at at streets when I was uh, in, involved in this folk uh, world because my parents they were like dancers, folk dancers. So I discovered snare drum and, the, and then I decided that I would like to also to to learn about it. And when did you decide to become a professional musician? Well, I think I was like 16 years old and uh, well, I was like playing a lot with the uh, youth orchestras and I was really enjoying the music, studying music and I thought, okay, if I can uh, just make my passion, my profession, it would be great. So mm -hmm. I just go for it, go for it. Yeah. Okay, so um, can you tell us a little bit it. about what your job is now? So right now I'm a principal timpanist in NFM Rosa Philharmonic. So here in, in the orchestra, in National Forum of Music. And I'm busy there, as well, I started the, the last season as timpanist. So this, this is my second season there. And what do you do for your job? Can you tell us a little bit exactly what you do? What is your job exactly in the orchestra? So uh, my position is timpanist. So my duty is play timpani uh, with the orchestra. So mainly what I would do in a normal day is just uh, go to the rehearsal in the morning, in the morning. Uh, three hour rehearsal with the orchestra and then in the afternoon or evening uh, practice myself the, the pieces I need to play with, with the orchestra and then on Fridays we play each Friday we play a concert at seven o'clock so that would be like me, my normal schedule. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll turn it over to you now if you'd like to do your presentation about timpani. And great so I would like to talk today about actually what is the the role the, the timpani how it's working in the orchestra. So as you know, because I know that actually at the school, uh, you, you just uh, ha had a lesson with Miss Sarai, and Sarai explained a little bit about the orchestra. So timpani is one of the instruments we, we find in a classical orchestra, symphonic orchestra, right? And I'm aware that you actually uh, check this kind of, uh, of picture. So here we, we can check how the, the instruments uh, are placed in a symphonic orchestra. So as you know, here in the front we have the, the strings. So this is the instruments, they make sounds by bowing the, bowing the bow against the, the string. So violin, viola, celli, and double basses, for example. Then we have here the woodwinds, like the flutes, oboes, bassoons. Then in the next row we have the brass. And in the last one, in the last row, we find percussion and timpani. So when I'm playing with the orchestra, actually I'm here in that position. The timpani is always in the last row. So it's one of the instruments really far away from the conductor. And normally you can find the timpani either in the mid middle here, left or right. So actually here in this picture is uh, at the right uh, part, but it could be also in the middle. Actually I, I like more playing in the middle because I'm just, in front of the conductor, so I really can check the conductor. Normally, musicians have to just check how the conductor waves the hand and play at the tempo, that, that is, means the speed the conductor decides. So it's very important that we can really check with the conductor, have eye contact. So I really like to play in the middle. And from this position, normally I play. And it's very important to know that the timpani normally uh, play with together with other instruments. So a symphonic orchestra is a big team, let's say, 
but normally the composers they compose in a way that the instruments works by smallest groups you know for example timpani play really often together with the trumpets so they're here i will show you later on like why is this tradition very important also the low instruments like double bass is here the double bass is the lowest instrument in the strings the biggest one really big and then the also like the uh, the brass the lowest instrument is the tuba so normally we play with the low part of the orchestra and really important also normally timpanis we are really good friends with the percussion the percussion is really playing next to us and normally we play a lot of uh, parts of the symphonies that we really play a lot of rhythmical stuff so the rhythm is very important so we have to play together with the percussion here so i will show you now how we normally play together between us so actually the the most of my presentation is about how the timpani play together with the rest of the of the instruments in the orchestra okay so this is the, how the an orchestra looks like and check for example here the timpani is in the left side instead of the right but it's always in the last row so it depends on the conductor of the timpanis sometimes the orchestra is different tradition and even us it depends which piece we play we move a little bit the timpani but always the last row okay so i would like to tell you really fast that uh, the timpani before was introduced in the orchestra was used in the army actually so in germany normally the timpani was just a kind of uh, way to communicate so they had no mobile phones on the old times, of course. So the only way the general has to say to the army the instructions, what what he would like to do, like we hold on or we attack to the enemy, it would be the timpani. So normally, as you see here, the timpani just would ride a horse, and then just would play from the horse, you know, and he would do a kind of thing like tagatatan, tagatatan, for example, and then the army would attack, for example. And it's very important that in this period always timpanis work together with the trumpets as you can see in the right part of the picture and this is very important because as you will listen now the timpanist really play really often with the, the trumpets actually i have a friend of mine he plays trumpet and he normally says that there is no timpanist but but actually we are like third trumpet always in some kind of repertoire like beethoven and uh, some composers so actually i have a friend that always says that i'm also a trumpetist in some some way and I'm going to show you now an example where the timpani play really, really together with the trumpets and you can check how it works. And I want you to listen also, because I know some of you play percussion, that in this recording, in the end, the timpani stops and there is a percussion instrument that is going to gonna sound. So I want you to listen carefully. You can recognize which instrument is actually sounding in the end. We can listen the snare drum also in the end. I think some of you you can play actually this instrument, right? So now I will show you that the timpani plays really often also with uh, my best friends, the percussionist. So I will show you a recording now that as you can see in the picture we have the bass drum here. Everybody knows the bass drum, right? Then we have the timpani here. And the toms, you cannot see really well in this picture, but here are the toms. And the, in this piece, the percussion plays together with the timpani in the beginning, and then afterwards, the rest of the orchestra joins. I'm gonna show you. with the timpani and then afterwards the whole orchestra especially the strings are coming in okay as we could see in this example now i would like to show you also like the timpani is often really uh, focused on rhythm and i'm gonna show you an example we call it ostinato music which is a italian word but actually it's really easy what it means is like the timpani is playing all the time the same rhythm 
this rhythm so all the time as a kind of uh, you know rhythm that you repeat on the on the basses and then the brass is playing the melody okay so together with the timpani again it will be the percussion and other instrument we saw before that you should uh, be able to listen now and it's very important that you listen also here that the timpani are really, really loud. And one of the reasons is like, we have two timpanis at the same time, not just one player, but two. And sometimes the composers uh, ask a second timpanist to play in order to play even more powerful. So I'm gonna show you the example. So you have to listen to this rhythm, like ta ta tan 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 It sounds all the time. With the timpani, they were playing also. Again, the trumpets, this rhythm, da -da 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 -da. so as we checked before, we are really good friends with the trumpets also. And also here, you can see the timpani is playing together with the, this woman here, who is playing the snare drum, okay? So again, with the percussion. Okay, so we check that we play really often with trumpets, we play really often with percussionists, and who else is coming now? We have the low instruments in the orchestra. I told you before that the lowest instrument in the strings were the double bass, is this instrument here, right? Really big, the biggest, uh, the biggest string instrument. It sounds really loud. And the tuba, who is the lowest brass instrument, and because timpani is also a really low instrument and really big one, we play normally together. And here I'm gonna show you that actually we are playing the with this called in music bass line. The bass line is uh, a kind of melody, it's sounding in the in the bass. And I can show you here, the two and the double basses are playing together. And I'm gonna show you first which kind of uh, melodic line they are playing. So now this sound you listen is just a sound I did with the computer, okay? So it's not timpani at all, it's just a sound from the computer. interesting because the timpani is not only able to play able to play rhythm like the snare drum for example but we can also play different pitches so we can play melodic lines so for example with the xylophone you would be able to play a melody like uh, for example happy birthday but with the snare drum it wouldn't be possible you can just play a rhythm but the timpani we are also able to tune the different timpani in different notes so we can actually play this kind of melodic lines like you are gonna listen now. I'm gonna uh, put an example that is like a uh, Strauss piece and the timpani is always playing together but double basses and also the tuba. And it's the, this melodic line you listened before, okay? So let's see if you can recognize. So here, I would like to show you again the same idea. So the question is, can we play a melody with the timpani actually? So normally with the orchestra, we don't play the melody. There are other instruments like the violins, the flute, who are more, they fit better to play the, the melody, right? So the timpani just play the, the bass all the time or rhythms. But here I'm gonna show you the difference. So we have here two, bars this snare drum part so with the snare drum we can just play rhythm that's why you check that the notes are always in the first second in the third space okay between the third and the fourth line in the here in the part but 
here in this other picture, as you can see, this is a tympani part actually, and you have G, C, C, D. So you have the different notes here. So that means that you can actually tune different notes in the tympani and you can create also kind of melodies. So you're gonna just put an example and you can listen that the tympani can also create this kind of melodic uh, sense. It's not used normally in the orchestra, but this is a kind of example I would like to listen because it's, it shows how the tympani can, can works with the melodic lines, okay? So that is not possible to do at all with the snare drum or the tambourine, but it will be able to do with the xylophone maybe. Mm -hmm. Also the timpani we can do it, but it's not normally our job. However, sometimes we need to, to tune different notes in the timpani. So what we do is like change the tension on the heads. So the heads is this part here on the top on the, of the timpani. So we change the, the pressure of this head by using these pedals here. So it's like actually playing timpani is like driving a car. You have to use your hands, but you have also to use your feet. And that way we can just tune different notes uh, on the teams and we can just create this effect like melodic lines, okay? So now I'm gonna show you an example. I hope we can uh, listen properly. And this is a clip, a video clip I just cho chosen because in this, uh, in this piece, the timpani is just really, really, really as important part of the orchestra. So the whole orchestra in some moment just wait for the timpani to play and you can just listen to the timpani. It's like the most important instrument in that, in that opening. And I'm sure this piece you already listened before for sure. Now I would like to take you to, to show you that normally timpani we play with three different sticks. So what we want with these different mallets, like you can see here that I have a big collection of mallets or sticks, is just to create different sounds, okay? So we have mainly sticks made by boot, that it sounds really clear, clear sound, re-articulated. Then we have flannel that is in between and felt that is really soft mallet. So that sounds really, really like delicate, okay? So you're gonna show you really fast the difference of sounds. For example, we have boot. So it's really clear articulation. And then in the opposite, we have felt. And felt, the timpani we use when we really we like to play really, really, really soft and delicate sound. Let's check. So it could happen that the conductor ask for a specific a specific kind of sound and normally we use also the hands to play really different if we want to play really warm sound we play like slow motion when we play really articulated we play kind of faster with the movement to create the sound but mainly we can change a lot by using different sticks which makes different colors so 
when we want to play with different instruments, for example, we want to play with a really low instrument, maybe we choose to play with felt, it is one in the left here. And maybe we would like to play with the percussion, which is really rhythmical. We can use booth that actually is more like uh, articulated. Okay, so it's just to let you know that we use different mallets to create different sounds. Okay. And now, how many timpani can be used at the same time? So normally, as I showed you at the first example, we have uh, at the beginning in the, the timpani playing with the orchestra, we had just two timpanis, but then. Uh, the composer started to compose more, more, more difficult uh, parts for timpani, more complex. And also the timpanis itself, they were developing. So we could use the pedals and really tune different notes. So nowadays, it could happen like in the right picture. This is really, really odd. It's not, it's not normally that that happens, but we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, around 10 timpani. This is really strange, but Actually, with the orchestra, I had to play a couple of times eight timpanis at the same time, eight drums, okay? But normally, I just with the orchestra two, three, four, until five normally. So normally with four or five teams, you should be able to play the 99% of the, of the pieces you play with the orchestra, okay? So the reason the timpanis, we use different number of timpanis, is like when uh, we play a really complex piece, we need to tune really a lot of notes at the same time, we use many teams. If we have just, for example, two different notes, let's say, for example, G and C, and we play just two notes the whole time, then we just need two timpani, and then it's really easy, and we just put just two timpani, okay? That's why sometimes sometimes you can see that the, the timpani players use different number of timpanis, okay? Now, I would like to show you to finish this picture, and the reason I just, so you this is because really often happen after a concert that somebody comes and asks me why are I'm so close with the ear to my to my instrument to the timpani and people doesn't know why and it's always really curious about it so I always get really a lot of questions about it. So the thing is when we tune a note in the timpani, so we use this kind of pedal to to change the tension, we need to check if the the tension is properly in, in the on the head, so in this part of the timpani. And in order to check is if we just put the, the, the new note really properly tuned, then we just put our ear really close to the instrument and we just play a little bit like this, really soft with the finger. And on this way, we can just listen. The orchestra is playing at the same time. So what we want to do is just checking that the instrument is properly tuned. Then, then we start playing again and it sounds really good. Otherwise, it would be a disaster. If you don't check before, it could happen that you play not together with the rest of the instruments nicely in tune. And that's why we do that. So uh, this is the last thing I would like to show you. So just to summarize what I show you is which are the instruments we play with normally the timpanists in the orchestra. And then I just try to, yes, to get some answers from the most common question I get. How many instruments do you use? How many timpanis? And this kind of questions. And now I'm sure you want to ask something else. Um, the first question comes from Anthony and he wants to know how long it took you to learn how to play the timpani. Huh, how long? Well, I started to play timpani with First, I started just with a snare when I was like eight years old. And then I started with the rest of the instruments in percussion, so with timpani also. And I started with 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm 31 years old. So that means that I'm like about more than 20 years playing timpani. Mm -hmm. And I am still learning. So, so I think uh, after 20 years, I still need to learn a lot. Uh, our next question says, what are the timpani heads made out of? This is a really good question. So I show you mainly two kinds of timpanis. Some of the heads of the timpanis are made by plastic and other are made by natural skin. Natural skin is the skin we achieve from the calf, from the animal. So traditionally, uh, normally they use always the skin of the animal, the calf skin, but afterwards uh, was the plastic was invented and the timpanis uh, started to using also this kind of heads 
And the reason why it's like that is like the plastic uh, heads, they are much cheaper and they last longer. So for example, in my orchestra, I have to change each year all the, all the skins, almost all the skins, not all, but uh, for sure three timpanists has to be removed the skins and change again. And that means it's way expensive. Personally, I like it more the sound you get with the natural skin, but it's more expensive and also it's more difficult to play because the intonation. So when you put the right pressure in the timpani to play really in the right pitch, so you don't play too high or too low, it's more difficult to achieve with the natural skins. But the color for me, it's much better. Mr. Diego, like the, yeah? the, the skin or the plastic will change the sound of the drum as well? Yeah, the thing is normally, uh, it's difficult to, to explain, but normally what happens is like when you have natural skin, you listen more like the, like the tone of the timpani and not so much the resonance. It's a kind of simple way to explain it. With the plastic skins, you get much, we call it, it's really difficult, it's called it overtones, but it's just the resonance. So you get a lot of resonance and you can understand so well the pitch. So that's why actually we use different, uh, different kind of, uh, of heads. We have another question. Someone would like to know if you play any instruments besides the drum. You mean out of percussion? Outside of percussion, do you play any other instruments or have you played any other instruments in the past? So when you, at least in Spain, when you, you want to study percussion, you are also, you have to study things of piano. But actually I'm not really good at it. And so I can play a little bit of piano, but not really great. So we'll finish now. Thank you so much, Mr. Diego, for your presentation. You're welcome. Really happy to be here. If you want any percussion related activities, you can contact me on Class Dojo. Or if you go to Facebook at Planning Logic Studio, you can contact me that way as well. Or you can find other resources online at the Percussive Arts Society. That's P A S dot O R G. So thank you, everyone. And I hope to see you in two weeks. Thank you, Diego. Bye bye. Thank